welcome back to e shikshana program uh, i am taking uh, continuation of uh, module 4 of our uh, water supply and sanitation so here we go with this so last class uh, we had uh, discussed about uh, different types of appliances soil appliances uh, fittings sanitary fittings and uh, in that in detail we had st uh, we had looked into water closets so uh, we had just covered uh, two of it so we'll just continue the rest of the types of the water closets in uh, that particular soil appliances so this is uh, one more uh, type of uh, uh, water closet which is called as siphonic wash down type so we finished squatting indian closet then we finished uh, european closet then this is the third one siphonic wash down type what about about the siphonic and wash down wash down type we'll just look into the details like what it is this european water closets or indian water closets can function in this particular manner it could function through siphonic action or through wash down action so what is it actually is something which we'll see it now so it's an excellent fitting used in siphonic flushing systems in which the pressure of the atmosphere is utilized to assist the cleaning of sanitary fittings as we have already discussed about the principles of siphonic actions in the earlier classes which is in third module uh, it's basically about the pressure differences which is there in the atmosphere and because of that the movement happens so similar idea in the similar idea this flushing also is been made so here what happens is it just it is just the atmospheric pressure it is just the atmospheric pressure which permits the use of water seals of greater depth in siphonic closets than as practicable in fittings which depend entirely upon the flushing power of water delivered from an ordinary flushing system so it is a, uh, these both mechanisms are about flushing mechanisms siphonic and wash down so we'll just see what they are so when we have uh, even if we are buying these uh, water closets we uh, these siphonic water closets are very useful because of these uh, atmospheric pressure it sucks the waste and uh, uh, sucks the waste from the pan and send it out to the soil pipe just because of the atmospheric pressure so it's more efficient than other type of flushing systems so this is something which is commonly used very very commonly used in all over it's a true siphonic water closet can be easily identified by the noise it makes so this is something which we can think about it so due to the air pressure when it sucks there is some noise created so this you can identify through the noise whether it is siphonic or just a wash down wash down is nothing but through the gravitational force the waste is sucked down so if it can be heard to suck air down you will have to hear the air down which is sucking the air down to the drain at the end of a flush then it is a true siphonic water closet at the end of the flush also you will have to hear the sound if not then it is a non siphoning toilet that siphonic action is not there right so these are two types the filling valve refills water into the toilet tank after every flush the flushing valve releases water from the toilet tank into the toilet bowl so in the flushing cistern or the flushing tank we can have two valves there are actually two valves in the flushing cistern or a tank which you see just behind the closet so one is filling valve what does it do it refills the water into the toilet tank after every flush you could hear the sound once the flush is done there is a automatic refill of the water Uh, that is happening with filling wall there is again a flushing wall at the bottom of the 
um, tank. So that is what is the point of that? That does releases the water from the toilet tank to the toilet bowl. Okay. Once water has been released into the toilet bowl, it will carry the waste in a funnel known as the trapway leading to the septic tank. The size and shape of the toilet bowl and trapway is the differentiating factor between a siphonic and wash down toilet. So, we know that we can either have a siphonic toilet or wash down toilet whether it is Indian closet, whether it is European western closet. However, we can either go for a siphonic performance or uh, wash down which is which happens through gravity. right? <coughs> so, the size and shape of the toilet bowl like in the Indian squatting, uh, squatting bowl, I was discussing about uh, size and shape of the toilet bowl elongated or oval shape whatever it is. So, the size and shape of the bowl and the trapway, trapway could be the trap which is going below the bowl. So, these are the two things which tells us whether we should we can it is a siphonic or wash down. Now, we can see the mechanism in this how the wash down type and siphonic, siphonic uh, type is there. This is siphon type you have the closet water is coming there from the back and filling the bowl and deep down it just goes and goes into the trap. Whereas, if we see wash down tap through the gravity it just pours, nothing is pulling back, right. So, you see that action in the siphon tube. So, one thing which we need to observe is in the wash down tap the bowl has kind of a container below where it uh, where it seals the water whereas here the trap which is used is also connected and the water seal is inside the half of it half of the water seal is inside the water trap and half of the water seal is inside the commode right so here because the pan is connected with trap the action when the flush happens it automatically pulls out the water and uh, puts it in the bowl and then it flushes through the trap. But here the trap is little separated only when the uh, water is uh, gravitationally it is collected in the bowl then it has to be taken out. So, it is just a wash down type and siphon type. By default, we almost everywhere we see siphon type because that is the best way of flushing it. Okay. So, we can see I had told you in the cistern there is filling valve and flush valve. So, we can see this is the cistern, right. So, there is a fill tube. If we open the uh, even in our own places wherever we use these uh, closets we can remove the top lid of the cistern if it is exposed if it is inside the wall it cannot be help it cannot help that's a different mechanism if it is inside the wall but if it is uh, mechanism is same but it doesn't have the tank like this there is other way of doing it but uh, when it is exposed, we can actually remove the top surface, we can actually remove the top lid which is covered like this. It can be removed and we can see inside the mechanism will be like you will have one float, rubber float and uh, you will have one fill tube, there will be one ball cock or fill wall. This is ball cock. You could see this is just like a sump. So, what happens on the sump? There is a valve, right? 
So, the something like that we have this ball cock here. So, that ball cock will always be on the surface of the water. Okay. So, once it is straight, it knows that it is filled. <coughs> then there is a flush handle, flopper and flush wall. Below you see, below the cistern, bottom surface of the cistern, there is a flush valve, right. So, from the flush wall, the water flows to the bowl through the rim, rim of the commode and then falls into the bowl and the same water continuously moves from the bowl to the trap. So, that is the siphonic action which is continuous from the cistern to the trap. <coughs> so, if we see in this section, there are holes in the, there are holes in the um, rim of the bowl, okay, which is, which acts as a siphon jet. So, it creates a difference, right. So, this is about how it can be worked with siphon type. A siphonic flush system also known as a gravity flush system uses vacuum to pull waste from the toilet bowl into the trapway. This is done by the shape of the trapway acting as a siphon. The, so, the shape of the trapway is something which is very 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 important. Now, the trapway here it is continuous whereas there is a break here the trapway is this until unless it get filled till here it does not go outside right. So, there is a deposit. So, there is a uh, difference between the trapway there is no continuous trapway happening there. So, that is wash down type very rarely we can find this wash down type in our homes. When the flesh liver is pulled the flush valve releases water into the toilet bowl in two ways. Firstly, through small holes around the seat rim uh, to clean the bowl. Secondly, through a hole known as the siphon jet hole which shoots the water into the trapway, initiating the siphon effect. So, that is the most important thing which we have to remember while we are talking about the siphon toilet, siphonic toilet. For, so, in this picture as I mentioned, there are holes around the rim so that the water cleans the bowl, the water which flows out of the outlet wall, flush wall, it goes to the pan surface, inner surface. There is one few jets siphon jets are there around which pressurizes the where you can see the water pressure is more like that which starts pressuring the water pressurizing the water to go deep into the uh, trapway. So, that what siphon jet does it creates the pressure. So, the jet water jet which is provided there it creates So, secondly through a hole known as the siphon jet hole, siphon jet hole which shoots the water into the trapway which initiates the siphonic effect. So, the benefits of a siphonic toilet as compared with the wash down toilet, it cleans the toilet bowl surfaces, seated rim hole cleansing and through the seated rim hole cleansing flush system produces minimal noise, less likely prone to odor due to high water level, odor will be less. Now, you can see wash down work, working principle of wash down toilet. So, you see here we, we have a bowl here, this is something we how if you see it from the top how you see this uh, wash down toilet. Few of the old houses which you see, they are still having this wash down toilet. Just through the gravity, the water water moves into the pan and then just flows like that. 
there is no jet there. But whereas, however, uh, I will just show you in the first. Uh, however, whereas this there is a jet, because of the jet there is an additional action taking place. So, this wash down the principle of this wash down toilet is the wash down toilet uses the weight and the gravitational current of the water to push waste from the bowl to the trapway. Uh, in this cases most of the time you see that the excreta or a human excreta or feces which is there, uh, there is a tendency of those that remaining there in the bowl itself below. Uh, because there is no pressure to push that whereas in the other one chances of happening like that is lesser. So, the wash down toilet uses the weight and the gravitational effort current this is the most important thing gravitational current and the weight of the fecal matter. Current of the water even the uh, uh, weight of the water to push waste from the toilet bowl into the traffic due to the fact that a wash down toilet has a short wide trapway, waste is easily able to enter the trapway with the sheer force of water surging out from the tank. So, it is just that we need to see that this is right in the center and the, as soon as the water flows there is no other way than the uh, waste flushing directly into the closet trapway. So, that is about siphonic action which is basically happening uh, for any type of uh, closets and wash down closet. You can even classify the closets based on these two. Okay. Then we have a universal or Anglo Indian type. So, as the name itself says Anglo Indian type, this has combination of both European closet and Indian closet combination. There are very few which is existing as of now, but then you can still see them. Water closet is suitable both as a squatting pan of the Indian type or a sitting pan of the European type. So, Anglo Indian type is nothing but it should have a squatting pan or a sitting pan like a European which you can sit on the pan easily or a squatting position in the on the squatting position also you should be able to sit. So, the top of the pan, so the top of the pan of the wash down or European type is flared out to provide for the foot rests when used as the Indian type. So, basically the difference is you might find something like uh, foot rest on the pan. It, way it might have this uh, directly on the pan and then it can have the cover seat and then the lid. So, when you find this footrest on the European closet, it can be considered as Anglo Indian type. For use as the European type, the seat hinged to the closest closet structure can be turned on to rest over the footrest. A cover is also hinged to closet structure as in the case of European type for covering the pan if so desired. As I said you can you can see from on the ground this is one example. So, on the ground the whole commode is fixed with the tank. So, the shape of the commode also if you see it is in this uh, closet type because there is a space there is a space for human feet right. So, it can be people can could sit on that in a squatting position also, but it is raised from the floor. So, since it is raised from the floor, it you can just use a seat cover to cover this and also it can uh, in a sitting position also this can be 
used. So based on the convenience this is mixed. Whoever is comfortable in whatever position can use this closet. Then we have uh, slope sinks. They are hopper shaped sinks with a flushing rim and outer similar to a water closet pan which is used for the reception and discharge of excreta collected in bed pans of patients. So this is as I already said in the last session, slope sinks are mostly used in the hospitals and they are in hopper shape and uh, uh, in this particular sink it is actually a, a soil appliance but it acts like a sink. So what happens is bed pans, the excreta, discharge of excreta collected in bed pans, in the hospitals bed pans are used commonly. So that excreta is poured into this slop sinks. So they should be provided with siphonic flushing, flushing systems. So these slop sinks are connected to the soil pipes directly. They are not poured into the commode, it is poured into the slop sinks. They should be provided with siphonic flushing systems or flushing walls in the same way as water closets and connected to the soil pipe, right. As I said it should be have a siphonic flushing system or a flushing valve same way as water closet connected to the soil pipe. Uh, finally it has to connect to the soil pipe. In hospitals and similar institutions, institutions of like uh, where medical is learnt or something like that, this can be used. Slope sinks are provided with both hot and cold water supplies. This is also an important thing which we have to remember. Both hot and cold water supply could be provided in slope sinks. Then slope sinks and slope hoppers, it is all it can it can also be called as sluice sinks, right? So sluice sinks also referred to as disposal units and slop hoppers are designed for use in hospitals, nursing homes, surgeries to enables, enable the safe and hygienic disposal of clinical waste such as the contents of vomit bowls, vomit could also be poured into that drainage bags. In certain cases sluice sinks can also be centralized or individual. So based on that these things could be used bed pans and urine bottles to be poured into that sluice sink, right. They can also use in, they can also be used in domestic setting for individuals with chronic health conditions. In houses also it can be used if somebody has, somebody in ho house has a chronic health condition, this could be used. Maybe in uh, Vridhashram or something like that it could be used. There are different shapes available in the square pans or like kitchen sink only it could be available. The only thing is sometimes it will have this flushing tank or it might not even have the flushing tank. But uh, this uh, excreta is, uh, uh, the shape of this is something which we have to remember. So slope sink or a sluice sink or a slope hoppers, when uh, something is poured into that, it is collected here and the hard material or the hard waste is collected matter or hard matter or a hard waste is collected inside this and connected directly to the soil pipe. The content, water content is poured in, uh, is dripped towards this side. So the separation of those both could be done for examinations purpose. So the sluice sinks are much the same as toilets in terms of both their appearance and operation. So same way you can just flush this. Once you put, see, we can see that there is no tap or anything extra. Even though it is called a sling, sink, sometimes uh, uh, there are different uh, types of sluice sinks. So based on that it can be chosen. So we just have to flush it and it is clearly separated. So sluice sinks are much the same as toilets in terms of both their appearance and operation. They are made up of a conical bowl 
into which the waste material is poured, the user then operates a lever button or chain to activate the flush mechanism which draws water down from a system and flushes the waste material down the soil pipe. The sluice sink is connected to the soil pipe with a P or S trap which prevents foul smells from coming back up through the drain. Then we have a bidet. Bidet is uh, something which we do not use in our context, Indian context much, but uh, whereas in other countries they are in use. So, bidet is nothing but it is a sanitary fitting on which a person sits for washing the excretory organs, especially after using the closet. After uh, after urinating or passing the excreta whatever it is. So, excretory organs could be washed there. After using the water closet, it could be washed in this particular bidet. So, there is a while you while installing this bidet in the bathrooms, it has to be most probably it has to be next to the commode so that it is easier for them to clean the excretory organs. It is also classed as an ablution fitting. Ablution as the word itself says the meaning of the ablution is to cleanse yourself. So, it is a classed as an ablution fitting. It is not uh, uh, something where you pass an excreta, but it is an ablution fitting. And provided with hot and cold water supplies, it can be having cold water as well as hot water. Sometimes it is provided with a sits jet or any submerged inlet. So, something like this, this is one modern type of uh, bidet which we see. So, it has uh, inlet here, then the spray etc. It looks like this, just like this, similar to that, that is it. It has a cover, taps etc. So, the branch supply pipe which is connected to the submerged inlet should join the main supply service not at the level of the fitting itself, but at a point not less than 1.6 meter above that level. The passage of water by siphonage from the fitting back into the supply service would then require a negative pressure equal to 1.8 meter head of water which is likely to be obtained. Where this arrangement is not practicable. The fitting of a non-return back pressure or reflex wall in the branch supply pipe at a point immediately above the fitting may afford adequate protection. A secondary but important use of the bed is as a foot bath. That means foot, foot can also be cleaned like in our tradition or any other tradition, um, few of these traditions we have, uh, uh, once we use the closet or bathroom or a toilet or anything such that uh, we'll, uh, there is a tradition of washing their foot, right. So, that also could be done in this bidet itself, inside the bidet only foot bathing also could be done. They can be floor standing, wall hung or off back to wall design. It can be floor mounted or wall hung, however it is, right. Just would like to tell you one more point in this. So, uh, the supply of water both hot and water, hot water and the cold water is provided here. So, it will have several uh, uh, sprays here which goes up and then uh, the spray itself, it acts as a spray, jet spray and then it cleans the excretory organs and then foot bath, even if the foot is placed inside this, it can be washed. Then we have a composting toilet. So, this is, uh, there are waterless toilets also, uh, but composting toilet is a very, very new type, not new type, but then as a commode, 
the way it is coming um, the way we call it as composting toilet is something which is new the idea of that but this idea is from the septic tanks which we had earlier the uh, excreta and all would settle in the septic tank and then it it was used for manures and other things after all the process happening but then so that had a lot of uh, uh, manual intervention to convert the waste into usable manure or etc but here there is a few things which is automatic and it has a easy way of doing it so composting toilet compost toilet is a type of dry toilet it's a dry toilet that makes composting human waste easier it turns the human waste into compost it turns this toilet setting will turn the human waste into compost composting is carried out by microorganisms so this is what it is it is the basic idea of how composting can be done it is uh, carried out by microorganisms mainly be bacteria and fungi bacteria and fungi using this you convert the waste into compost under controlled aerobic conditions this is very important to uh, to make manure or compost aerobic condition controlled aerobic condition is required now how do you get this much in one particular toilet that is something which we will have to look into this dry toilet uses little to no water it can use a little water or not even required so instead to mix human it instead it mixes human waste with it mixes human waste with peat moss sawdust or coconut coal now these are add these are used to mix the human waste so now if we see peat moss sawdust coconut coal all of these are used to convert a lot of wastes into compost right similarly it is used in this particular toilet also typically these dry materials are added in before going into the bathroom so these materials can be added in the composting toilet commode or a toilet so aerobic bacteria break down the materials how composting happens is this way aerobic bacteria which is provided there bacteria uh, break down the feces and urine in much the same way as a compost heap just in a closed container however it does not complete the composting process fully the compost toilet starts the composting process but doesn't entirely finish it temperature don't get high enough for this to typically happen so what it what to do so likewise uh, something similar it was uh, seen composting toilet there is a box below and there is a hole direct hole sometimes a seat with a cover most of the times it is like this just it has to be removed seat has to be put so we can see the seat cover seat and the hole here also cover seat lid and the box it could be as wide as this or small or whatever it is but below in this box you have to fill all the coconut coir the materials which is required to convert the excreta into the compost any material as such could be used appropriately for converting the com, uh, converting feces into compost so in order to ensure your feces turn into compost you must have another compost bin set up specifically for this purpose so what happens is when there is a feces inside even though it is filled with coconut coir and other things it might not get converted very easily because of the temperature which is inside it needs a higher temperature 
So in that particular case, what could be done is there could be another similar setup, similar setup. So to create that uh, uh, fishes into compost, right? For just for that, it could be provided. Now, this is one more thing, a very general idea of how we can do a compost toilet, composting toilet. So, this is one thing which has a seat, nothing, bowl is also not there, at least in the picture which we, which I showed here, there is a small bowl which could be cleaned or anything, but uh, the purpose does not serve here because uh, cleaning does not happen properly. So, this lid could be removed, covering seat and the lid could be removed and cleaned. So, it has a box where it is filled with uh, other thing. Uh, in the other picture, uh, if it is portable, it has to be filled here only and uh, with the layers, if it is permanent like this, like it has to be connected and there is a secondary lid uh, with a rubber seal creates an airtight seal and stops insects from getting in. So, this lid, secondary lid is sealed with the rubber tightly, right? And there is a bin, we can see this green color box which is made of, that bin is inserted or it could be made through concrete or whatever it is and below that bin there is a ball valve, wall which is used to flush out the waste material connected to the brown to drain any surplus liquid from the bin. So, the surplus liquid if some liquid is passing through it could be uh, collected down and that is passed through this ball wall and then it is directly connected to the garden hose. So, since there is a compost which is happening here the water which is released is directly connected to the garden hose. So, it acts as a nutrient for the gardening. Then there are few air vents. Now you see there is an air vent which is going up from the bottom straight to the top. So, air vents are very important to avoid the whatever um, soil or whatever use vents are very 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 important. Air vents for, vent for ventilation, uh, ventilation pipes with slits are attached in each corner these slits are attached in each corner and uh, to channel the air to a chimney. The air will be channeled from everywhere to this chimney, <coughs> powered by the sun or a small computer fan. Then sawdust, uh, here in this container, there is a separation, you can see there is this uh, separation, one fourth is uh, filter and the above is the compost which you can make. So, sawdust is sawdust or other organic material could be filled which converts the feces into compost. So, 20 liter of here in this particular exam they have used sawdust. So, 20 liter of sawdust is laid at a base 20 liter to kick start the compost toilet 1 to 2 scoops is then added each time it is used. So, each time the commode is used, this has to be refilled. So, we have to keep on filling this. Then in the bottom, there is a filter as I already said, there is a water which is coming collected in the below bottom, which is made with a shade cloth wrapped around the metal grill. This lets liquid, liquid pass to the bottom. So, there is a filter. So, this is the setup which can be done for composting. One uh, simple example of dry toilets and uh, dry toilets is becoming very common, very very common in most of the places and uh, so this is one simple example of how uh, this commode could be used even if it is raised then there is a compost toilet, poop soil and it is the liquid is separated from that. There is a fragrance, on top of this there is a fragrant flowers 
So, the fragrance of that is sucked from this pipe and allowed inside this so that inside the room there is no smell of this uh, waste. So, and then the whole uh, air, air vent is also provided at the top which is going out towards the chimney. So, uh, this is how it can be planned. Uh, so, uh, this is a, a continuation of the same thing. A bidet, I was talking about how the bidet can be used uh, just for uh, cleaning the excretory organs. So, here is uh, one uh, small uh, uh, visuals of like how this bidet is done. It is always next to the closet, bidet is always next to the closet here. So, uh, it can and if you see in this picture, there is water which is jetting out from this and so that is how uh, it is, it could be used. So, there are different ways of using it. So, that is one thing. Then uh, these are few uh, elements which we have to consider while we are selecting or while we are designing or while we are uh, expressing about uh, things, things like soil appliances. So, seat cover is something which is very important for, so uh, uh, seat cover is very important for closets. So, they are installed over the seats which has, uh, which have to match the dimension of the seat below it, right? Below the pan also it has to match and uh, there is an extra space, extra allowances given for the seat cover inside as well. These covers uh, also help in, uh, uh, in the use of the seat and uh, prevent foul smell which is emanating out of the system when it is not in used. So, if you see this seat cover, it will have this uh, sitting uh, area and also the closing cover. So, this could be closed easily. So, there is a maintenance of uh, this one. And this is an extra addition for any commode. Likewise, it has something uh, like a, uh, since it is the seat covers are mostly plastic and uh, uh, with water cloth. Uh, plastic seats and covers for use with water closets generally made of phenolic plastic. They are made of phenolic plastics, polystyrene, urea formaldehyde or polypropylene. So, all are all of them are the byproducts of plastics. So, that is uh, something which we have to consider. The seat covers are supposed to be plastic shell withstand, but it has to withstand the load also, load of 1150 Newton at specified locations for 30 minutes. The consideration of this is for 30 minutes, even keeping the maximum usage of the code, uh, commode, 30 minutes is something they have considered to design the weight for the seat covers. So, even for 30 minutes, uh, if somebody is using total of 1150 Newton, it has to withstand, right, without any damage and permanent distortion. Since it is a thin plate, it should not be distorted. So, I was talking about all over uh, all the systems, all type of uh, western closet, we were talking about uh, flushing systems or a flushing tank which you can call it as. So, they are meant to flush or drain out of the human waste from the toilets and urinals of the use, Up, operated manually or can run automatically. These sustains, systems could be operated manually in the sense manually in the sense you will have to flush that with the to the flushing button or lever using lever or flushing button. They can run automatically. So, when the, it is attached with sensors and all, it can automatically run. So, installed at high levels and operated through a chain or at a low level and operated through a handle. Chain could be used, handle could be used to operate. So, something like this is uh, what we see. So, the lever has to be added for the system. So, when the liver is pressed, there is a flow of water. These cisterns can be of cast iron, 
cast iron, vitreous china clay, pressed steel or plastic. So this has to be cast iron, china clay, plastic is also widely used, it is also available in pressed steel. They are usually supported on cast iron brackets embedded in the wall. If it is one piece like the cistern, flushing cistern and the pan and the trap, everything is one piece, no need of fixing it with the support. If it is a separate entity, then fixing of that has to be thought over. So then there is a different type of uh, flushing systems which we use, bell type flushing system which is commonly used which I explained in the earlier, session, earlier uh, slide that uh, bell. Uh, something like sump which is wo which works like a sump. So, this is a ball and uh, it works as uh, stopping the uh, water flow. The bell is kept over the outlet pipe, the inlet end of which is slightly above the water level. When the chain is pulled, the bell is lifted causing water to spill over the outlet pipe and starting the siphonic action due to which the whole water rushes towards the outlet and flushes the water closet. This I am not explaining in detail since I have explained in the earlier slide uh, while explaining the commodes and uh, type of flushing. So then we have dual flushing system also. This is uh, something which is found out by the research institute CBRI Rurki. So the reason for finding this uh, flushing system is due to drastic cuts of cuts in water supply due to drastic cut in water supply there is a need to economize the water consumption so dual flushing cistern is used but uh, we all use this dual flushing cistern if you see there is if you see in few of the flushing tanks which is exposed or which is inside the wall concealed there is a dual flushing uh, flushing uh, tabs or buttons so one is full flush, another one is half flush. So the shape of that also will be like full flush will be little bigger, half flush will be little smaller, something like that. You can look and identify which is full flush and which is uh, half flush, right? To save the water, around 7 liters of water can be utilized from this, right? So every flush, so much water is going out of this. So this dual flush is something where uh, people found out from Rurki uh, so that it you can decide when to use half flush, when to use dual, uh, full flush. So that is very useful in saving the water. To operate for fractional discharge, the chain is pulled and left to left while for full uh, left while for full discharge. The chain is pulled and held in that position until the full capacity is discharged. This is with regard to the um, uh, chain. If we have a pulley chain, then if we just pull and hold it for a long time, full capacity will discharge. If we hold it for a while, half capacity or a small capacity will discharge, capacity of water will discharge. So this is one more type of uh, flushing system, automatic uh, flushing systems for urinals. These are uh, chain type and dual flushing system and uh, bell type flushing system are for closets, water closets, right. So this is for urinals. Urinals uh, uh, is something which we also have to still look into. So urinals also come with uh, flushing cisterns. So uh, in that also they have found uh, CBRI Ruki has uh, invented few things. This automatic flushing is being invented for urinals, automatic flushing. This eliminates the use of copper fittings which are presently provided with public urinal systems. The new fittings consist of YouTube made of plastic pipe. Then we have uh, when the water level in the cistern reaches the level of the bend, the siphonic action takes place and the water present in the cistern rushes to the urinals. This flushing mechanism is same 
for everything whether it is commode western closet or indian closet or for a urinal anything you use this for the flushing system siphonic action or uh, uh, wash down action is uh, the mechanism is same so it is up to us like whether we have to choose for siphonic action or a wash down action right so the siphonic action takes place and the water present in the cistern rushes in directly to the urinus the material used is indigenous and saves the cost of copper fitting which is about 80% right the material used is indigenous and saves the cost of copper fitting which is about 80% it can be cheaply manufactured and in easily fixed in the position and uh, here we come to our uh, last slide of the class so uh, this is uh, just to give you an idea of uh, traps is also part of the uh, closets and uh, so uh, uh, this is in detail we have uh, spoken about uh, uh, different types of traps and other things in module 3 so here I am just giving you a glimpse of different shapes of traps which could be used for uh, commodes and urinals and other plum plumbing appliances. So this is P trap, S trap and Q trap right. So here one thing where I would like to mention uh, that uh, um, uh, one thing we have to look for is the water seal. These water seal which you see the depth of the water seal. This is a cleaning eye. Cleaning eye means uh, you can open the cap, there would be a cap and then the water which is here could be open, uh, could flush out. So that is why it is used to clean the water seal. This is cap is cleaning eye is used. So this particular thing is called as cleaning eye. Now water seal is very important. This whole thing is called as water seal. The depth of the water seal is very important to maintain the, uh, to maintain and avoid the smell, to maintain the freshness of the space and to avoid the foul smell which is coming backwards from the commode. So these are connected with the outlet pipes. Now if you see the inlet is like this, outlet is like this. So they would be connected with the soil pipe. So soil pipe if they are connected, if this water seal is not there, then there is a chances of foul smell entering back into the commode. Now the commode could be here, right? So this much water seal is something which you could see in the commode and then from there below it goes till the trap. This is this water seal is what is helping us uh, the shape of the trap and the shape of the pan and this is helping us to helping them helping the commodes to work in siphonic action and non siphonic action. So these traps are also used in the commode. Now if you can see here in this picture. Yeah, so here, here if you see the P trap is P trap is inside this, inside this, or P trap or S trap or whatever trap is there, and here you can see small portion of trap, which is below the commode, right? So this is a different concept. Yeah, here you can see the trap, uh, not here, yeah, so here the trap is this one, which goes inside, so the trap is connected like that. Yeah. 
Uh, just one more point is uh, now in this P trap, this could be connected directly to the wall. A strap can directly connect it to the floor. Q trap could also be connected to the wall as well as uh, floor. If the wall is like this, it could be connected like this or it could be connected like that. Here the S strap would be connected to the floor and here if you have the wall like this, it could be connected like this. So based on these decisions, you can choose what type of trap is required for the commode. So with this slide, I would uh, complete this session uh, for uh, soil appliances. Next class will continue with waste appliances and seventh part of the module 4. Thank you.